Hi everyone, this is Maverick Pa, the Chemistry Guru. Now in this video, we want to discuss the suggested solution for 2021 A-Levels H2 Chemistry, Paper 1, Question 11. Now 11, a student mixes 20.0 cm3 of 5.00 mol per dm3 sulfuric acid with an equal volume of 5.00 mol per dm3 sodium hydroxide. Initial temperature of both solutions is 25.0 degrees Celsius. Now the maximum temperature reached after the reaction is 50.0 degrees Celsius. Assuming density for both solutions is 1 gram per cm cube. So what is the value for the enthalpy change of neutralization calculated using these values? Now we have four options A, B, C, D. Later we will run through the options after the calculation. The topic tested in this question obviously is under energetics, uh, in particular calorimetry question. And the process is here. Maybe let us take a look at the process and understand what is going on here. Now, the concentration and volume for H2SO4 is given 20.0 cm3. Concentration for H2SO4 is 5.00 mol per dm3. And I'm mixing this with equal volume. That means another 20 cm3 of sodium hydroxide at the same concentration. So when I mix the two solutions together, the total volume obviously will be 40.0 cm3. Initially, the temperature for both of them is 25.0 degrees C. And the highest possible temperature that we can measure when you add the two solutions together is 50.0 degrees C. Now this is within expectation because we know that Neutralization is an exothermic process, so the reaction should give off heat and the water or the solution absorbs this heat and the temperature for water increases. So there are a few steps that we need to take to calculate enthalpy change of neutralization. First thing is I want to determine the heat released by neutralization. Now remember the process involving neutralization is exothermic, the reaction gives off heat and heat is absorbed by the solution. Assuming there's no heat loss to surrounding and there's a temperature increase in the solution, so what I can do is I can calculate the heat that is absorbed by this 40 cm3 of solution. Using this expression here, heat absorbed equals to mc change in temperature. So personally, I like to remember this as m subscript w. That means this is the mass of water multiplied by C, which is the specific heat capacity for water, multiplied by change in temperature for water. So mass of water will be 40.0 gram, because the question already gives me density is 1 gram per cm cube. So 40.0 cm cube is equivalent to 40.0 gram. So mass is 40.0. Specific heat capacity is 4.18. This information is in a data booklet. We can refer to that. Change in temperature will be highest possible temperature, 50.0 degrees Celsius minus the initial temperature 25.0 degrees C. And I can work this out to be 4180 Joule. Of course, I can convert this to kilojoule, 4.18 kilojoule. And this heat absorbed by the solution comes from the heat released by the reaction. Again, usually we assume there's no heat loss to surrounding unless it is being mentioned by the question. So, Heat released by neutralization will be 4.18 kilojoule. Now the next thing we want to determine is I have to determine the limiting reagent and I want to calculate the number of mole of water that is formed during this neutralization. Because enthalpy change of neutralization is with respect to per mole of water, so I have to first find limiting reagent between sulfuric acid versus sodium hydroxide, who is limiting. Then based on the limiting reagent, I find how much water is being formed during this neutralization. Balance equation is here, very simple. H2SO4 plus 2 sodium hydroxide to give me sodium sulfate and 2 moles of water. So number of mole of acid is concentration times volume. So 20.0 divided by 1000 multiplied by concentration 5.00. The number of mole of sulfuric acid is 0.1 mole. And since the concentration and volume for sodium hydroxide is exactly the same, number of mole of sodium hydroxide will also be 0.1 mole. Now, between these two guys, I can determine limiting reagent. So if let's say I'm using 100% of your sulfuric acid, if I'm using 0.1 mole of sulfuric acid, how much sodium hydroxide is required? 
for complete reaction based on the mole ratio mole ratio for sodium hydroxide to sulfuric acid is 2 is to 1 so I actually need double the amount of sodium hydroxide I need 0.2 moles of NaOH to completely react with all my H2SO4 obviously I don't have so much I only have 0.1 mole of sodium hydroxide this means that sodium hydroxide is limiting H2SO4 is in excess and therefore when I try to determine the number of mole of water form it must be based on limiting reagent must be based on sodium hydroxide I cannot base it on sulfuric acid because it is in excess so not all of it is being reacted off so the mole ratio between sodium hydroxide and water is 2 is to 2 or 1 is to 1 therefore number of mole of water formed will just be the same as number of mole of sodium hydroxide 0.1 mole so I've determined the heat released by the reaction I've calculated the number of mole of water involved in this neutralization and what I can do is I can determine enthalpy change of neutralization which is here enthalpy change of neutralization will just be a negative value because I know this is exothermic eh? there's an increase in temperature for the system so reaction is exothermic that's why the solution can absorb the heat and there's an increase in temperature so it is a negative value because the reaction is exothermic Q term which is the quantity of heat that is released by neutralization divided by the number of mole of water so we have calculated all these terms previously the quantity of heat is 4.18 kilojoule number of mole of water is 0.1 so the enthalpy change of neutralization will be negative 41.8 kilojoule per mole so we have already calculated this value and therefore we can run through our options what is the value for enthalpy change of neutralization calculated using these values it is minus 41.8 so if I run through my options A, B, C, D, C will be my answer right so that was the question involving calorimetry under energetics determining the enthalpy change of neutralization making use of information given in the exercise so if you have learned something useful from this video please give me the thumbs up like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more weekly video lessons that's all for now I'll see you next week